Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new in the channel, let me introduce myself first. My name is Christina Riana and I'm from Christian University in Indonesia. And for today's video, I'm going to talk about death penalty in Indonesia. So, death penalty. Capital punishment, also known as the death penalty, is the state sanction killing of a person as punishment for a crime. The sentence ordering that someone is punished with the death penalty is called a death sentence, and the act of carrying out such a sentence is known as an execution. Let me move my camera first. Next. Let's talk about the death penalty in Indonesia. Like my title said. After Indonesia declared its independence in 1945, death penalty was still imposed in many prevailing laws and regulations. It was indeed imposed with different national and objective, adjusted with the political system and social politics situation when the legislation was enacted. Ever since the independence in 1945, the politics of law in Indonesia is still directed to use death penalty as one of the most important punishments under its legal framework. Even after reformasi in 1998, in less than 18 years, at least five laws or undang-undang incorporated death penalty as one of many punishments, regardless of the fact that 1945 constitution or amendment explicitly ensures the right to live, while only five laws that incorporated the death penalty after the reformasi. The number of articles that incorporate death penalty as punishment increased twofold compared to the figures of death penalty articles during 1945 until 1998. And next, I'm going to talk about pros and cons. But first thing first, let's talk about the pros. It First, it deters criminals from committing serious crimes. Common sense tells us that the most frightening thing for a human being is to lose their to lose their life. Therefore, the death penalty is the best deter when it comes to discouraging people from carrying out the worst crimes. Second, it is quick, painless, and human. The method of execution has gradually will become more human over the years, so the argument that the death penalty is cruel and unusual is not fully. 3. Without the death penalty, some criminals would continue to commit crimes. It deters prisoners who are already serving life sentence in jail from committing more serious offenses. And lastly, it is a cost-effective solution. The idea put forward by abol abolitionists that it costs more execute someone in prison than for life is simply not true. And, the, and there is plenty of evidence to show this. Every con every bros always have cons, I mean. So these are the cons. First, it is cruel and unusual punishment where basic standards of human dignity are compromised or undermined. Second, there are strong religious arguments against the death penalty. Life is sacred and God-given. Divine judgment comes in the afterlife. The third, it continues the cycle of violence. Retribution is just another word for revenge. It is essentially just a form of the flawed thinking that two wrongs can make a right. The pro argument is that killing people is wrong. Therefore, you should kill people for killing, which makes no sense. The lastly, the justice system is bound to make mistakes. In the case of people who are wrongly imprisoned, they can be released from prison and given compensation, but a wrongful execution can never be righted. Okay, so from the ones. Next, we move on to the topic three, which is its conclusion. In essence, Indonesia criminal produce procedural law does not differentiate the justice system between defendant that is charged with the death penalty. In almost provision in the criminal procedural law in Indonesia, the same standard of trial is granted to all defendants regardless of the charge. 
there is still an issue of the implementation of fair trial principle in criminal case in Indonesia, especially toward a person who charged with that sentence. This is evident by a number of death penalty cases in which issue on the ineffective access to legal aid or assistance, like approved by the prosecutor, prosecutor I mean, and violence during the investigation process, and inconsistency between the decision made by the Supreme Court. Next. My opinion. Um, I have no problem with the death penalty, seriously. If you are taking other people's lives in, in an evil way, then sacrificing, sacri I mean, sacrificing your own seems appropriate. However, I am concerned about the wrongful sentences of innocent people. For example, the case of Joe Aridi. He is a young American who is known to have been falsely accused, wrongly convicted, and wrongly executed for the 1936 rape and murder of Dorothy Trey, a 15-year-old girl in Pueblo, Colorado. He was manipulated by the police into making a false confession because of his mental incapacity. Eddie was severely mentally disabled and was 23 years old when he was executed on January 6, 1939. Let's talk more about Joe Eddie for the example of the wrongful sentences of innocent people. Okay, so Joe Eridi. While half on that road during the appeals process, Eridi often played with a toy train given to him by prison warden Roy Pass. The warden said that Eridi was the happiest prisoner on the that row. He was liked by both prisoner and guards. Pass became one of Eridi's supporters that enjoyed the effort to save his life. He said of Eridi before his execution. He probably didn't even know he was about to die. All he did was happily sit and play with a toy train I had given him. So, Joe already is mentally unstable. He always play with his toy train. Then why the judge or the police believe that Joe already killed Dorothy Train or raped Dorothy Train? It doesn't make sense. For his last meal, Erdi requested ice cream. When questioned about his impending execution, he showed blind bewilderment. He did not understand. He did not understand. Okay? He did not understand the meaning of the gas chamber. Telling the warden, no, no, Joe won't die. He was reported to have smiled while being taken to the gas chamber. Momentarily nervous, he calmed down when the warden grabbed his hand and reassured him. Take a look at the picture and laugh, the happiest man on that row. And below it is Joe with water with his toy trains. Okay, next. Many people at that time and since then believe that Eridi was innocent, which is true. A group known as Friends of Joe Eridi was formed and in 2007 commissioned the first stop stone for his grave. They also supported the preparation of petition by David A. Martins, a Denver attorney, for a state pardon for clearing Eridi's name. In 2011, Eridi received a full post to most and unconditional pardon by Colorado Governor in Bill Winter, 72 years after his death. 72? 72 years after his death. Ritter, a former Devon's district attorney, pardoned Aridi based on questions about the man's guilt and what appeared to be a forced false confession. It is the first time in Colorado that the government has pardoned a convict following execution. I don't want this incident to happen again, especially I don't want Indonesia to feel what Joe Aridi went through. I agree with the death penalty, but I hope the government will be careful when it comes to imposing the sentence on people. So, that's it. That's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you got something from this video. And I, hope, I really hope to see you guys again for my next video again. Okay. Bye.